All right, I'm here with Lewis from 10 years. How's it going, man? Nice job. Yeah, I'm doing well, man. I'm a little, uh, a little flustered. I'm in uh, New York City, and we've been here all day long going interviews, just for a few and stuff, so we're uh, tromping around all over this crazy place. Awesome. And you guys, right now, you're promoting the new album that's coming out, Minus the Machine. Um, what's the release date? What'd you just say? I said you guys are promoting the the new record, uh, Minus the Machine. Um, yeah. Well, what's the release date for that record right now? What are we looking at? Oh, it's coming out August 7th. August 7th, so it's right around the corner. We couldn't be any more excited to get this thing out because, you know, we've sweated over it and labored over it for the past seven months, and, um, you know, we did it all on our own. And so we've really kind of you know, stuck our necks out to do this thing. And, uh... Yeah, we're just really proud of it, man. I, I, it's kind of one of those things where it feels like we're unsigned again, and we uh, we're you know able to do everything on our terms. So it's it's a hundred percent us. And it's a very honest record and, and a very deep record. Yeah, uh, and like you said, you're doing it on your own, you guys. Uh, this is your first independent release. Um, yeah, uh, Pale Horse Records. Uh, from what I understand, you got your own label that you're releasing this album under. Um, you know, you guys spent the last uh, a lot of time under Universal. Um, what are some of the differences? Well, you know, we, you know, we had our tenure with Universal, and it, and it, you know, I, I, I can't just, I'm not going to knock it, to, in a sense, to where you know that we're not grateful for what we had with them. You know, cause we definitely wouldn't be where we where we're at now without them. But um, after a while, being on a major label is be really. Um, when you're, when you're an artist and you're trying to be creative and you're trying to create something that you're proud of and not something that just you you know not something that you not just creating something that you think is going to sell because we've never had that kind of mindset and I hate the word single and I hate you know just having to be concerned about sales the whole time in terms of like what's successful or not that getting out and doing this on our own you know we're able to have everything on our terms and get that creative control back because I feel like, you know, on the last couple of records, there's songs to me that um, they stick out, you know, that they're kind of like, it's like they were forced. And in a sense, they were, is that, you know, we're, we're on a major and they're going, well, uh, we want a ballad, we want a hard rock song, and we want a mid-tempo song, and then we don't give a crap about what you do on the rest of the album. And that is a very, very... Um, weird place to be in when you're in a band because you know you're, you're being forced to, to write in a certain way and it's very hard to work under that kind of pressure and it's very hard to work when you don't want to do you know maybe necessarily like a ballad especially the kind of ballads they want us to do I mean it almost feels like you know they're ready for us to be Bon Jovi or something and I'm like dude have you ever heard this band before I mean you signed us you know like what is the deal right and, and um, you know this time Every every track on this record is uh, is just completely us. Um, you know, we, we even you know we went on a limb to do our own label, but we went on a farther limb when we decided that we wanted to do it on our own instead of going with a big name producer. I mean, we've worked with multiple Grammy winning producers and spent millions of dollars doing that. And at the end of the day, it's kind of like you know we feel that. Uh, 95 to 99% of that album was self-produced of all the albums we've done. Um, and is it worth spending half a million dollars to pay somebody for, you know, $5,000 worth of input? And like, no, you know, let's just do it on our own. And uh, so we did that. We, we mixed it on our own. We did everything on our own. So it kind of, it's a risk. Um, and it's, it's definitely like, you know, putting ourselves out there in a sense that, you know, if it doesn't work, it's completely our fault. But I, I like having that control. I like knowing that I'm, you know, my fate is in my hands. Right. And, you know, and, and I don't know if I said this already, but, you know, it's like if it sells five records or five million records, I, I don't really care because I know that we were true to ourselves and, um, and this, this is, you know, 100% up. Yeah, and just listening to the album, it, um, you know, first off, I absolutely loved it. I've been a t I've been a fan of ten years since you know the Autumn Effect, since you know the days oh, of Wasteland. Um, you yeah. know, and you guys, you, you guys have just you know, you're one of those bands that when you hear a ten years song, you don't even have to know it's by ten years. You can, you can almost just tell. Um, yeah. You know, um, and it's really cool. When I when I sat down and listened to Minus the Machine the other day. Um, it really stuck out that, um, you know, 
it, it's definitely a 10 years album, but there's something different about it. And, um, you know, maybe the fact that you guys are doing it on your own label and you, have, you guys have complete freedom is, you know, is what sets it apart from other 10 years albums. And, um, right. yeah, I absolutely loved it. It was, um, it was just, it was, it was almost refreshing to hear something because it kind of has the same sound that Feeding the Wolves had a little bit, but it also kind of goes in a different yeah. direction and, and, you know, in the same aspect. Um, yeah. So, right, most of the people that I've played it for, like you know, I've let a couple of my close friends hang on to it and and, uh, and sit with it, and they're like, you know, it's uh, it's one of those records I can listen to over and over again because and each time I hear something different, you know, it's not like it's not a record that's easily digested just on the surface. Right, and I, I took that as a compliment because um, you know it's not it wasn't really designed to be like a record that you throw on and listen in the background while you're drinking beer. It's more of a record to put on with headphones and kind of vibe out to. Right. You know, so that's kind of what, what we were really going for. Right. Something that uh, you can latch on to, you know, and appreciate. Right. Um, and on this tour, have you, have, you, have you had a chance to play some of the new songs? Because um, I understand oh, you, guys yeah. are, you guys are wrapping up a tour right now. You're kind of on the back back stretch of, uh, of a sure. tour right now. What's the fan response been like? Um, well, you know, we went into rehearsals to, for this tour, and we were like, all right, what do we do here? Do we play... You know, we, in the past, when we have a new record coming out, especially if it's not out, like, do we play one or two songs like we normally do, or do we just play a bunch of new stuff? And, um, you know, of course, we're playing the songs that people want to hear, you know, people that, that uh, you know, just that barely know us and only know us for singles, you know, we play some of that stuff. But we're like, screw it, man, let's play, let's play some songs off a new record. And so we're playing four new songs. Wow. And a lot of the fans that I've seen over the years that I know, you know, that would definitely be honest with me, are like, this is my favorite part of the set. So they're coming off really, really well live. Hmm. And uh, so that's, you know, that's, that's gratifying, um, especially since you know, they can't hear the record yet. The people are digging them live. Um, I know they're going to dig them on the album. So it's, it's been cool, man, you know. Uh, we've been in the studio for six, seven months just working on this thing. So we've been anxious to get out and play it live. So we... That's what we're doing. And when you were, when you go from uh, take take the switch, and all, I almost want to I use the term loosely, but the risk of going from a major label to an independent, doing an you know an album on your own, especially a veteran band like yourselves, you know when you uh, when you take the chance of releasing one on your own, and then the fans love the music and respond really well, it must you know it's got to give you some sort of a more, even more of a rewarding feeling than it has before. Oh. A hundred percent. I mean, you nailed it on that because that's that's really the truth. It's that now, um, it, and and the, the records that we've done in the past, they weren't. It wasn't like they were written by anybody else. Um, we wrote them. It was just sometimes we were being pushed in a certain direction to write a type of song, and this time we weren't. And this time, when it came down to picking singles, we weren't writing singles. We just picked songs off the record that would probably work better as singles. And uh, and that's that was you know a very you know gratifying thing for me to do is that we're like no one in the kitchen with us while we're writing we're just kind of totally left to our own device and having our own studio enabled us to go in at any time that day or night and then also you know we had songs that were completely written and gone down on on tape and then listened to them and sat with them and got comfortable with them for a few weeks and then decided that, hey, you know, this part doesn't work. I think this could be better. So we uh, pretty much had to be pulled away from it. And our management was like, all right, guys, <laughs> we need you to finish this this album or it's never going to come out. Because as, as musicians, you know, we're, we're always going to, like, hear it. And then after we've heard a song for, you know, you listen to it a hundred times, after a while, you just have to like get away from it. You have to just stop changing things because you're kind of just beating a dead horse. But you know, we wanted, we wanted to make things as as as, um, as quality and as, as you know best sounding as possible. Right, and you know, look, looking at the uh, looking at kind of the venues and the schedule of the tour that you guys are that you're on right now, there's not a whole. There's really not outside of some festivals and everything. There's not a whole lot of you know big amphitheater. You know. Big, big uh, weddings. They're really, they're more, they're smaller, they're smaller uh, buildings, smaller rooms. And one thing that must be really cool is, you know, not just 
playing the smaller venues, but also coming out of the studio for being in the studio for so long. You guys must have just a lot of pent up energy, just ready to get on stage and just just destroy it. And then being able to be that close to the fans is almost like playing one of the smaller stages at a festival where the fans are up close and personal. You can really just let yeah. loose. Um, what's it, what's it like to be in those uh, those smaller settings and just coming right out of the studio? Well, I mean, everybody's fresh, everybody's hungry, everybody's got, you know, we have new material to play, which we're definitely excited about, and then, you know, we were like, all right, we'd rather do um, smaller venues and pack them out, and do larger venues and just kind of like, you know, toss it up in the air on whether or not it's going to be a good or not, you know, a, a packed house or not, because I'd rather have a small venue and it's full because the, the, the energy that that creates in a room is hard to reproduce, even in an amphitheater situation where it's like, you know, there's 50,000 people there. I think there's, you know, those large shows are fun. There's definitely some nostalgia involved and like, you know, when you're up, you're like, oh, it's so cool playing in front of all these people. But, you know, we've done that before mm -hmm. and there is a giant disconnect when you're playing up on a huge stage and the barricade is 30 feet away and you can't see anybody and it just doesn't, the, the, the energy is completely different. It's, right. it's completely different than playing a smaller venue. And we, we like to get up in the crowd's face and, and interact with them and stuff. So it kind of throws us off when we're not able to do that. Uh, I know Jesse, you know, I mean, he can, he can jump down in the crowd still with the microphone, but it's hard for us to kind of do that. And so it definitely is, is weird, you know, and I, and I, you know, I think all of us, I can speak for all of us when I say we'd rather play, you know, a smaller place and be intimate with the crowd. Right, and I actually, unfortunately, I've only been able to catch you guys once, but it was on, uh, I don't know if you remember the tour, it was in Des Moines, Iowa last year, May, on the uh, the Revolt Tour with Hollywood Undead. Um, yeah, yeah. I saw you guys at the Valair Ballroom um, with Hollywood Undead, and Jesse, actually, I think he did jump down into the crowd, and um, just like you said, those smaller settings are just, you know... Oh yeah, they're so much, yeah. They're so much more cool. They're so, they're just so cool, and uh, they're just they you get blown away. Um, do you remember that? Do you remember the Hollywood Undead tour last year? Because that that tour, that oh yeah, show was crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, I told him. I mean, I remember that one specific too. I mean, it's uh, you know, that's a, that's a, exactly what I'm talking about. Is that type of energy in a room? You know, it's hard to reproduce in a large setting because um, you just can't get that close to the band. You know, and I think people want to be close to the band. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if anybody, you know, if you could ask any fan if they'd like to see Metallica in a 200-seat room over yeah. seeing them in a 50,000-seat arena, they would prefer the club, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, you can get the, the more of a vibe that creates. And and um, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, we, we just much rather do that. Right. Well, hey, man, I, I really appreciate, appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to talk to me. It's been awesome. Oh, of course. Um, of course. Thank you so much. Hopefully I can catch you guys sometime soon if you ever come through Indianapolis. Um, in the oh, we will. Year. I'm looking forward to Yeah, we're going to be in Fort Wayne. Uh, we're going to be, I don't know how far Fort Wayne is, but uh, you know, Fort Wayne, Indiana, we're going to be playing uh, coming up here soon. So if you can make it out, man, just let, let managers know we'll take care of you. Oh, definitely. I, uh, I will definitely put that on my schedule. Um, looking forward right. to it, man. Thank you so much. All right, boss. No problem. All right. Have a good day, man. All right. Bye. See you.